Oh my god, this music is so nice. Much better, much better than the Labyrinth Zone music. In fact, fuck Labyrinth Zone. How's it going, everyone? This is my hello. Welcome back to Sonic the Hedgehog Blind. In the last video, fuck the last video. We're in Starlight Zone. Let's relax. Oh, look at that. This is in the foreground, and it's also... Man, this looks like a spaceship or something. Different from what I expected from Star... Okay. You wanna play those games, huh, Sonic, huh? Man, this feels like a Sonic game again. You know, a spring and enemies have to be hot. Oh no! No! Oh, why? I like those little blings in the music. Being all like, remember, this is a Sonic game. You're supposed to be happy after all. Let's run backwards. Oh my god, you're actually doing a Sonic back. Whoa! Oh, it's you, you fucker. Get away from me. Never mind, I got away from you by going into hell. But, you know what? Let's just relax. This should be a relaxing time, right? No stress. No stress from drowning. No worries. The Queen of Matata, right? You know, just fuck life. I mean, don't fuck life, but, you know, just have fun in this starry area, because that's... Okay, how? 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 Wait, how? Okay, now I'm curious and confused. Uh, 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 I want to try that again. I want to try to get there. Hmm, let's see. Oh, hi! Okay, just despawn those platforms. Why not? <laughs> that works for me. Uh, what's here? Whee! Running backwards. Oh my god, running backwards is like so awesome. Okay, high wind. Work those muscles. It's leg day. Oh yeah. Oh, hi. Die. Just get away from me. Never touch me again. I don't want you to touch me with your sea urchins. There's nasty sea urchins. There's so much to do around here. Uh, so much wind. Ugh. Never mind. I guess there's not a lot to do around. Well, that's adorable, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I'm just fucking around, aren't I? At least I have a supply of one-ups. For Act 1, at least. Here's a little pink bob bomb. Um, bob bomb. Explode already. See, this is a... This is a metaphor for... Fuck you, Nintendo. I'm gonna blow up your character, even though this character is a bomb that explodes, so by definition it explodes. Let's see. Uh, God damn it, Sonic. Run, just walk up the slope. Sonic doesn't like slopes. He doesn't like anything. He doesn't. I guess I'll just run. Why don't I? You serious? I can't get back up? How the hell did it? Oh, that's that's what I did it last time. I just ran this way. I think. Yeah, that's how I did it. Okay. See, I'm learning. I know that's this is a very this is a very good Pyrrhic victory for oh, very good victory for me. Until that happened, you know. You gotta ruin everything for me, Sonic. Why do you gotta ruin everything? This is supposed to be my day. But no, you just... Whoa! And I still couldn't dodge that fireball. After all that. Man, these fireballs were not making me happy. E -e -e -e. Okay, this is tripping me up. Like, big time. Okay, good. Solid ground. Where I can actually process what's... Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. This is the theme song to your True Detective Season 2, which was weird. Yeah, you know, like I said before, I watch more TV shows nowadays. Or at least I try to. You know, just TV's been good these days. So, rings, rings. Ring, rang, rong, rong, ring, rong, rong. Ring, rong, 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 rong. That sounded a bit racist, but yeah. Speaking of, t speaking of TV shows, one TV show that I've been trying to catch up on is Steven Universe, mostly because, well, if you follow Lukajan on Twitter, then chances are you know why I'm interested in following 
the crazy antics of Steven Universe, and I'll say this, the cool thing about Steven Universe is that it really builds on world building, and it relies a lot on lores, and that's awesome. Oh, 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 special stage, special stage, special stage. Wait a minute. So I used the level select cheat code to get here, which would mean that I'd be transported to... Yeah, I'm transported to this one. Nothing too special. We've seen this before. Do I know how to do things? No. Um, I know where the Chaos Emerald is, actually, though. Not that it matters, because I doubt there's enough stages for me to get all seven Chaos Emeralds. Yeah. Actually, that was a question that... So I went to PAX Prime um, this time around, and I went to the Throne Controllers panel, and one of the questions there was... Um, oh, oh, oh. One of the, no, 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 no! I didn't even, I didn't even get to continue or anything like that. But yeah, one of the questions was, you know, in a Sonic game, how many Chaos Emeralds are there? The guy who was called up to answer the question didn't know because he never played a Sonic game before, and he didn't even know anything about Sonic lore. But he guessed, he guessed correctly anyway. The answer was, what? <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. The answer was 7, and he guessed correctly, so that's good on him because that was supposed to be an easy question. Now what was an example of a hard question? This is the, this is the hard question that I remember the most. They said, so this is supposed to be a challenging question where if you got this category, you were screwed, but the question was, you know, there's like 6 generations of Pokemon nowadays. Name Pokemon 600, name Pokemon 658. Everyone was all like, oh, oh shit. However, it was interesting for me. If I had been called up there to answer the question, there would have been a 60, no, 70% chance I would have gotten it right. Because at that moment, when we were all trying to figure out what Pokemon it was, I remembered one number that was important. 649. That's how many Pokemon there were as of Gen 5. Now, 658 means it's Pokemon number 9. So... It's Pokemon number 9 of Gen 6. The problem was, when I was trying to figure out what Pokemon it was, I actually thought that Victini was part of Gen 6, so my answer would have been Frogadier, but I think if I had been caught up on stage, I might not have made that mistake in my head, because Victini is of Gen 5. So the answer is not Frogadier, but the answer is Greninja, which makes sense, you know, you know considering how popular Greninja is. You're not gonna get, to go get away from me, aren't you? Fine, I'll accept my f What? I'll accept my fate and just die. Why don't you- Why don't you just fucking die already? Just give up! I'm confused by this right now. Love you. Oh, I see. That's cute. Kind of. Whee! No, that is- that is pretty cute. I like that. This whole level's cute. Even when there are- uh. Okay, I guess I'll... You know what, that was a bit too complicated for me to try out, but yeah. So there would have been a chance where I would have gotten a... You know, if I had been called up to answer that question, I would have used mathematical reasoning to try to get close to the final answer. The thing is, I would have guessed incorrectly at some point, but... Yeah. What's interesting was that I was almost called up um, at the Throne Controllers panel. The thing was... The method they used to choose people was, when you entered the room, you were given a TRG card with a number on it, and that number would determine, you know, who gets to go up to answer questions or play games. And the way the numbers were determined was, well, just Emil would just, Emil or Chaka Conroy would pick random numbers, and one time he chose a number that was close to mine, and it was actually the number belonging to my, well, so I met this guy, um, and we, we met, I met this one guy, um, we met when we were waiting for an autograph signing from composers like Grant Kirkhope, and yeah, so I met Grant Kirkhope by the way, but, um, so he was, he actually got called up, so that's, that was pretty exciting. He got one question correct, and then he proceeded to humiliate himself in front of everyone by playing Tetris rather... Yeah, you can watch the panel if you want. It was an experience to be there. Everyone was shouting at him, being like, Oh my god, you can't get a single 9 in Tetris. But yeah, 
Um, there was another another time when someone got called up and his number was one above mine. Come on! Yeah. I think the guy who was called up instead of me was the guy who beat Emil in Pokemon. And he was a huge Chaka Conroy fan, considering how he bought, like, he brought a toys, you know, red Pikmin with him. <laughs> Man, I've been just vlogging about PAX Prime this whole video. Like, nobody wants to hear about your personal experience of PAX Prime. Nobody was there anyway. Nobody lives on the West Coast. I mean, nobody who watches your videos lives on the West Coast. They all live on the East Coast or in different countries, apparently. Yeah, I don't know, it was a good experience. Um, I'd say... I would be down to try a different pa you know, convention out. Is there stuff down there? Like, is it safe? It's doesn't. It doesn't seem safe. Where am I? Yeah, um... Yeah, so it didn't seem like that was the right answer. Um... Oh, no. Oh, right, I can just forget about all of that. Being like, screw... Hi. Yeah, so... PAX Prime was nice, but... It was a little difficult going by myself. Not knowing anyone... Oh, I could have gotten that. Oh, wait, I can still get that! <sighs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't know anyone... I didn't know anyone personally going to PAX Prime, so... I was mostly attending the convention by myself. Now, I did make an admission to meet some people like Lucajin and Proton John. And apparently, I've become a household name in their respective streams. Mostly because I, I you know, do a bunch of crazy shit on Twitter and make my, make my name known through donations. So, I don't know. I guess I got my name out there. Uh, my name is a household name, apparently, which is very flattering to hear from them. Or at least hear from Lucajin. I don't know. It was awesome meeting Lucajin. Like... Yeah, it was awesome meeting people, but I know, like, they were busy. They were busy mostly because they had to deal with stuff like throne controllers, Polaris, being. There's a fact that PAX Prime was, like, um, the last of the summer conventions that they've been to, so they were probably all tired of conventions by then. And, you know, so there's a fatigue from so many conventions. And then there's stuff like, I don't know, uh, what? Let's see what else. Um, they were just busy. So, I mean, it's not as if I was going to hang out with them anyway. I mean, even though they know who I am, especially now that they've seen my face, um, it's not as if we're bros or anything like that. <laughs> Come on, don't even dream of that. Don't even dream about being bros with the YouTubers and, you know, Twitch streamers you look up to. Th that's a fantasy, my hello. Remember that. But I wanted to be real. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? So, I don't know, like, it would have been nice if I knew people who went to PAX Prime personally. Um, aside from the people who I met in lines and, oh, I made the same mistake. Yeah, I don't know. It's the thing about me, though. Um, I'm not the best at socializing, so I'm a f I guess one thing that I kind of am not too happy about is that I've met people at PAX Prime, but I don't think I've made lasting or meaningful bonds with people. Like, some people and I have followed each other on Twitter, but their Twitter accounts are of their normal lives, whereas mine is of my hello, so I'm the weird one here. So I felt a bit weird giving out my, you know, Twitter handle, and it still feels, feels weird being on Twitter now that real people know who I am. So that's actually the weird thing, really. So that's why I'd, I'm not too active on Twitter anymore. I just feel weird now. I don't know, it just feels weird. I mean, you may say, fuck it, don't let personal opinions change who you are, and that's a good advice. I don't know. But yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm not too happy about how, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I mean, it's just my fault, I think. Just a fault of mine, just and social interactions. I'm not, the I'm not the best at that. I'm not the best at reaching out to people in general. Which is a miracle considering. So the fact that I know some people on Twitter or YouTube. YouTube is a miracle itself. Yeah. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, not the bombs. Not the bombs. Okay, now the bombs. 
Can I even kill these guys? Doesn't even matter. Well, that was embarrassing. Yeah, so why did I even bring up this whole Pax Prime and the whole meeting people thing and the friends thing in the first place? Well, it's because I'm actually thinking about going to MAGFest in the upcoming February. And from what I hear about MAGFest, it's a legit hangout video game con. And, you know, some people say it's their favorite con to go to. Like Proton John said when I was saying goodbye to him, he like said, if there's any con you should really go to, it's MAGFest. And I believe him from what he said before. And and it was just interesting hearing him and Luca personally recommend it to me, especially. Um, and it seemed like it's a really chill and fun hangout con. Because that's kind of what I f didn't feel about PAX Prime. It wasn't a legit hangout con. I mean, I, I don't know. Like I've, I've met people too at the console free plays and we had a fun time. I mean, some kids and I, some guys and I played Smash 4 and we had a blast playing Smash 4. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, first of all, it's like a blast playing Smash 4 to begin with, but uh, one thing we did was we made a custom stage. Imagine a circle with a tiny hole at the top. That's the stage we played at. It's one of those stages where it's impossible to leave, but it, we just racked up so much damage. We were like flying all around to the point where we were like lagging the game. We went up to like 700 HP. It was fun, you know, just moments like that, you know, those are good times. Which is why I'd say like the console free plays and even the classic console free plays were like some of the most memorable memorable rooms for me. And I feel like if I liked those rooms the most, then maybe I might, might like MAGFest especially because, um, I mean, PAX Prime is not E3, but it certainly felt like a, you know, it felt a lot like an ex exhibition, you know. Uh, there were a lot of things I could have tried out at PAX Prime, like Oculus Rift or a bunch of indie games, but it, I guess it also depends on how much I want to be interested in video games in the future. Like, there were a lot of things I could have tried out, but I chose not to, mostly because of time, or the fact that I'd have to wait in lines for autographs or panels, or just the fact that I wasn't really interested in some things. Like, I wasn't interested in indie games anymore. Like, maybe it's because I've seen so many videos of, like, indie games on Game Grumps or Market... I mean, Game Grumps, mostly. That's where I see a bunch of Steam games. And even then, you know, I just hear about a lot of Steam games, too, from, like, um, just the general public. And I have to say, I'm kind of sick of indie games. I used to be all, like, indie games are pretty cool. Like, I played a few indie game Let's Plays myself, and I don't know, like... The indie game market is becoming a bit saturated, oversaturated I feel. It's not a good feeling, but... Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting, interesting boss battle. Alright. Yeah, so that's why I didn't re really feel like playing indie games a lot. One game that I really f grew attached to was Grandia 2. Like, I found myself enjoying playing the demo of Grandia 2, even though, first of all, Grandia 2 is an old game. It came out on the PlayStation 1. Come on! But this is the Steam re-release and I just found myself enjoying it a lot. I mean it's because I like old school RPGs, JRPGs, and I don't know, it just felt right for me. I, so like the demo person there. Um, so I actually visited the Grand Yet 2 booth in the morning on Sunday, or was it early afternoon? And then when the expo hall was closing, I actually went back there to play more of Grandia 2. And there's a lady who was, I guess, at the demo booths. And, you know, she instructed me on about the game, telling me what it was all about. And then, you know, when the expo hall was about to close, you know, I was there playing the game again. And she recognized me, being like, oh, hey, it's you. And I was like, yeah, I like this game, you know. More people should pay attention to this game because it's really good, really fun, and you know, I just really, I really felt it. But yeah, it's like if I cared more about a re-release of Grandia 2 over Oculus Rift or a bunch of AAA release games or you know indie games, it's kind of a weird indication of where my video game interests lie nowadays. God, I vlogged about Pax Prime all throughout this video instead of talking about Starlight Zone. I mean, that's the thing, this zone was just relaxing. I never felt like I was too stressed out or anything like that, so... That was a relaxing video. I felt good. Alright, Scrap Brain Zone. 
I don't think I'll, I'll feel good about this one. Music's interesting though. Hmm, it feels a bit retro. And that's the thing about Sonic, it has this retro feeling that, that I like. So I don't know, it may be weird, but... Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video of me vlogging about PAX Prime, I suppose. Until then, see you tomorrow at Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, this is a let's play about Sonic. Hello? Okay, see ya.